What's going on everybody? It's the Hook Cam back again with a mini film breakdown here. And does anybody else just feel absolutely horrible for Russell Wilson? I mean, the Rams defense has absolutely zero respect for that uh, Seattle Seahawks offensive line. Zero respect. And why should they? I mean, they got to Russell Wilson basically whenever they wanted to. They really didn't have to pressure. They manned up with receivers and they couldn't do anything about it. And uh, it, it was a tough game to watch. I actually felt bad for Russell Wilson um, because at some point you have to build around him. And I know that building an offensive line, you know, is, it isn't the sexiest thing to do in football by any means. But at the end of the day, it's what wins your football games. And I don't think that was ever more evident than in this Seattle and uh, L.A. Rams game. So here's a little bit of how the L.A. Rams just beat the Seattle Seahawks. I would consider it a little bit of an upset. I didn't expect Jared Goff to play. He ends up having to come out. Hope that um, the Rams starting quarterback from today. I can't can't remember his name and I feel horrible. I hope that he's okay. I heard that he had to take an ambulance out of the stadium. So we're going to dive into this thing. Before I do, if you can hit that like button, hit that subscribe button to my channel, The Hook Cam, as well as the Jackson Kruger Sports, that would mean the world to both of us. All right, taking a look at this first play right here. Basically what the Rams did all game is that they were just like, screw it. We're going to bring four or five up front. You're going to have to pick up one-on-one -on -one with Aaron Donald for when he was in. And with this play, right, what the, what the Seahawks have to do is they have to run a hinge protection. So they have to slide up top so it's going to be man on man he's probably going to be working here we got our guard on this dude who's outside shade of the tackle we got our center on this one tech and then we have the isolated block right here which is Aaron Donald on this cat right here the Seattle Seahawks left guard now well, the reason why they have to do that is because they're IDing this side to be the offensive line's responsibility at the bottom here this is where they have their back he'll come in and insert if they have a blitz if they're coming hot off the edge, Russ is going to hit his back hot right now. Basically, all of this fails, right? Not necessarily all of it fails, but basically what happens is that the defense has isolated Aaron Donald one-on-one -on -one with this guard. That's a battle he's going to win. I've really only seen one guard uh, play consistently well against Aaron Donald, and that's Joe Tooney uh, in Super Bowl 53, I believe it was. Um, but besides that, if you got one-on-one -on -one with Aaron Donald, chances are you're going to lose. And I'm not even saying that Joe Tooney like dominated. That's not at all what happened. He basically died slow um, and was able to do a really good job blocking him. So with that being said, let's take a look at this next clip. Again, Aaron Donald one-on-one -on -one with a guard. He does such a good job of getting into this offensive lineman's chest right now. I mean, this is just outstanding. He's eating up ground right away. Boom, boom. This guard has to work back, right? Drop back. So he's able to give up a little bit of ground, but boom, look at that right into his chest. Offensive line's got his hands on the outside of Aaron Donald. Aaron Donald has his hands right into that offensive lineman's chest. He's able to turn him him get an edge and then work around him i mean this is just phenomenal stuff from a d lineman he, he's an absolute monster and he's a, a force to be reckoned with and then in the secondary the rams really aren't doing anything crazy it's basically they're just manning up or they're running some sort of zone, right? I, for the most part, I saw man. I didn't see a ton of zone. Um, and, and they're basically like, you know what? If your receivers can get open before our defensive line gets to Russell Wilson, then great. We'll lose that rep. But for the most part, the LA Rams were able to beat the Seattle Seahawks in the trenches um, basically whenever they wanted to. Now, with this play right here, there's going to be a Leonard Floyd sack. This kid had an absolute day. Very, uh, very happy for him. I like seeing guys do well in the NFL. I don't really care who they play for as long as somebody's doing well and getting paid big money i'm happy about it so all the seahawks are trying to do here is they're working this motion trying to get backers to bump right off of this um they give a quick play fake right here ideally you have this locked up right and you know, offensive line wise, when it comes to play action stuff, the the rule and really it's for offensive linemen or running backs who's ever in protection. You never sacrifice protection for the fake, right? Um, I don't think that that's necessarily what's happening happening with this tackle, but he's working so far out at this, and he ends up working flat, and Leonard Floyd just gets deeper than him, and then bends the bends the edge right there. I mean, that, that's really all that happens with this. And then Russell Wilson's got absolutely nothing downfield. The only thing that he might be able to hit is this dude on a wheel right here he does, he's not even looking at it he's looking back to the middle of the field i notice he has a tendency to do that when he's working to one side or another he'll look back into the middle of the field and obviously he's got the arm strength and talent to get it there um obviously on that rep it didn't work now this right here oh this is tough to watch fellas this is tough to watch 
I was an offensive line coach. I always liked ripping receivers when they were soft. I don't, I, I don't mean any offense to this cat right here, but this might be the softest blocking I've ever seen on the edge. This is just absolutely horrible. He knows it's horrible. I don't want to light him up for it. I'm not his coach, so I got no business saying that. But th this is horrible. This is absolutely horrible. You got to attack right here, right now. You cannot let this happen. You can't let him get underneath you like that, right? Part of this, I do think, is the play design, though. I honestly do. If you're going to do something like this, you got to work there, right? You can't work from here. That's just too far for him to go. It really is. I understand that he's off coverage. Maybe you get there in time, but this is just bad news bears right here. Um, ju just, it's just bad. That's honestly all I can say. Coaching points wise, maybe I would tell him, hey, you got to be flatter down the line of scrimmage. We'll work back with this receiver. He'll adjust. And he comes upfield with this, which puts him in a bad spot because obviously this defensive back is going to be getting there right now, right? So the angle is going to be really weird for him when he tries to make contact. I would say maybe get a little bit flatter. But all in all, this is, uh, I'm not a fan of the play design. Phenomenal play from that defensive back. Obviously, I had to cut the clip for uh, hopefully monetization purposes. Uh, probably get demonetized anyway. But. You get what I'm saying. Horrible rep from the from the uh, receiver on that. You gotta be you gotta block better. You gotta be tougher on the edges. Um, this right here isn't a sack. This is just an incompletion. But just kind of showing you guys, you know, a lack of respect is what comes to mind with this. The L.A. Rams are just like abs. Screw it. Screw the Seahawks. Screw whatever. We're gonna bring five. If they beat us, then fine. What we get from this, the, the Rams are in a from what looks like a bare front, right? So we have this dude who's head up on the center. This dude who's on the outside shoulder of the guards with both of these two guys, and then we have our two edge guys right here great pass rushing front if you have the secondary great pass rushing front because what it does is it creates one-on-one -on -one matchups across the board and if you feel so confident in your defensive line you know one of these is going to land which is exactly what happens right leonard floyd is just dominating this tackle right here right he works inside comes back outside on this does a good job of committing that offensive lineman right he's working inside and then he does a great job of working that arm outside on that creating that leverage and then working around it i mean it's just absolutely domination from the LA Rams um, front seven front four really more than anything and then this really kind of bummed me out I mean as the, as the Rams you're trying to get something going what's something that you can do when uh, you got a fierce defensive line in front of you get your quick game going they're trying to do just that boom hit this quick little stick route right here ball falls right out of his hands I, I mean it's tough to win when you have stuff like that and to be honest, the Seattle Seahawks are they're, they're wasting some of Russell Wilson's prime years. You can't do this forever. You have to build around the guy. And I'm not talking about at the skill position because I think the Seahawks actually have a very talented skill position. But on that offensive line, you need to build guys. You have to get guys there who are going to be able to win for you. This is just an example of the coverage, right? Russ, he's always going to take this one-on-one -on -one matchup with DK Metcalf. He loves getting him in these one-on-one -on -one matchups. And this is just bad. You can't be fading away from footballs like this. Not with Jalen Ramsey there. You got to compete. You got to contest that. And all that happens is Jalen Ramsey kind of takes his lunch money with that. I'm not a Jalen Ramsey fan, so that kind of hurts me to say. And then this right here, the end of the game, this is just the, the cherry on top for the LA Rams. It looks like they got a little stunt going up front, which... It's really bad news when the Rams don't have to stunt and they're getting pressure because when they do do stuff like this, now you know you're going to get heat. He works. It looks to be right inside it. Yep, right into that tackle's inside, which is going to commit that tackle to that gap. And then we're going to loop around here with this other defensive lineman. Uh, I mean, Russ has nowhere to go. Absolutely nowhere to go. How about this? Da the, the bottom side of the screen here with Michael Brockers, who's just an absolutely ginormous human being, if any of you guys have seen him in person. But same sort of deal. We're running the same stunt here, right? He's working inside Brockers is working around I like stuff like this because when you work around right it's going to push the quarterback forward well when you have both of these ends working inside if they can get in far enough he's got nowhere to go which is kind of what happens here right he tries to step up right into the teeth of this defense and he's just locked down and that's going to happen again on this next rep right where they're bringing heat on this one this is you know ultimately fourth and 15 you're just trying to get them off the field um, I like it when defenses do stuff like this uh, bring heat in situations where you know the this offense is going for a Hail Mary, right? Don't let just let the quarterback sit back there. Um, pass rushing wise, it's actually kind of a cool rush, right? We have this nose tackle right here on the right side, defense's right side of the center. He's going to work across his face and then we're going to bring heat into that gap. What happens when you do that is you're going to bring the center with you and then you've got this guy for the guard, this guy for the tackle and then you bring this dude and you insert him right into that A gap where the center was, right like that. Running back's there to pick it up and then they have this dude coming down for the spy and uh, pre-snap you'll see 
see he's just kind of lurking at depth um, at the backer spot. Actually, he's up on the line, making it look like he's going to bring pressure. It's a cool pressure that they're bringing. Um, and ultimately, that was the death of the Seattle Seahawks. It was that pressure. It was that pass rush up front. Uh, the, Se the Seahawks have to do something about that. But anyway, that's how the Rams beat the Seahawks today, fellas. It was pretty straightforward. Great pass rush. Really good job in the secondary. Zero respect for that Seattle offensive line. They basically did whatever they wanted, and it worked. I really hope Russ can get some help with them because um, he's a very talented quarterback and very fun to watch. So anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this breakdown. If you did, if you could hit that like button, hit that subscribe button to my channel, as well as the Jackson Kruger Sports Hub, I mean the world to both of us. That's all I got for you guys today. I'll be back in the week with some more content. Until then, stay safe, wash those hands, and I'll see you next time.